Oh, hello there. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? Are you really happy? I hope so. Here we go then. It is Sunday. Yes, I'm back again. I know I was with you yesterday as well. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm with you twice within the same weekend. It's incredible. So here we are. Let's just get set up with the live stream. First of all, I need to put my live chat in place so I can see who is on today. Oh, what a day. I wasn't feeling very well this morning, I'll be honest with you. I was feeling a little under the weather because of my terrible hay fever. Fortunately, I feel a little better now, so I'm not feeling too bad. OK, let's connect everything up. And I think we are ready to go. <gasps> wow. Isn't it great? And as you can see, I'm outside today. I'm taking a very big risk because it is hay fever season if you are watching yesterday i did talk about this uh, i suffer from hay fever every year and today is no exception so i have been suffering slightly but i thought i would start off by offering you something romantic one of the roses that is growing in the garden at the moment i thought i would present to you a flower. Oh, isn't that beautiful? A lovely large rosebud. In fact, this particular rosebud is now in bloom. Ah. Uh, oh. <coughs> I better not sniff it too much because I might start sneezing. A rose is a rose by any other name, as Shakespeare once said. So here we are then, all together again. It's so nice to be with you here on YouTube. Every Sunday you can catch me here live from 2 o'clock UK time. Yes, I was with you yesterday. Something unusual yesterday. I decided to do a live stream yesterday because it was the hottest day of the year yesterday here in the UK and across many parts of Europe as well. It was so hot. Here in the UK, it got up to around 34 degrees. Can you believe it? 34 degrees here in the UK yesterday. Fortunately, today it is a little cooler, so it isn't too bad today. It's a lot cooler here in the UK. And wherever you are, I hope you are having a super duper day. Oh, this rose is so beautiful. Do you like it? Maybe I could post it to you, but I think by the time it gets to you, I think it will be all withered and dry. A bit like me, really. <laughs> so, my name is Mr Duncan. I teach English on YouTube. If it is your first time here, please let me know. Please say, Mr Duncan, it's my first time watching you. So don't be shy. Give it a try. Hello to everyone on the live chat. Oh, hello to Anisha or Anissa. Hello, Anissa. You are first or one of the first people on the live chat today. Also, Martha. Hello, Martha in Poland. Chris Alamgia is here as well. Hello also to Mika. Yes, I'm outside again. I thought the weather was going to be terrible today. However, it's turned out quite nice. As you can see, it is cloudy behind me. There are lots of clouds in the sky. You might also hear the birds singing around me as well. Yes, the birds are still very busy feeding their babies. And I'm out in the garden. Although today we have a slightly different view. So I thought today we would do it in a slightly different place. So you can see the background is slightly different from yesterday. I hope you are having a great weekend. How has your weekend been so far? I was away this time last week. In fact, a week ago today, I was standing in front of the camera in Portugal. And that's where I was a week ago, having a lovely, lovely holiday. I must admit, I had a great time. 
never been to Portugal before I've never been there before but I can tell you now I would like to go there again because I had a great time it was super duper I did bring some souvenirs back from my holiday in Portugal would you like to see one of my souvenirs okay when we buy a souvenir we normally buy it because we want to remember a special moment of time so maybe a special moment of time from your past you buy a souvenir and then in the future you will always remember that special moment so here it comes one of my souvenirs from my holiday in Portugal it is something that I'm going to display in the house and here it is right now can you see it it is a little ornament ornament an ornament is something that you normally put on display to show to your friends or maybe you have it hanging in your house or maybe you have it placed in a special cabinet to show your friends when they come round an ornament ornaments ornaments are very popular here in the UK if you go into anyone's house here in the UK quite often you will see in their house you will see lots of ornaments and some of those ornaments will actually be things that they've bought on their holiday such as this so this is a an actual tile so this is a ceramic tile and what you normally do you hang this on the wall from this small hook so there you can see one of my souvenirs that I've bought from Portugal and you can see on there it is a rooster you will see the rooster all over the place in Portugal to be honest also fish as well so you will often see the emblem of the fish and also the rooster as well would you like to see something else from my holiday <laughs> here is something that I bought and I will be sharing this with mr. Steve oh yeah can you see what I have here this is something that a lot of people were asking me about last week they were asking mr. Duncan are you going to buy some Porto wine so yes I did I bought some I bought one bottle a large bottle also mr. Steve's company gave him a selection of small bottles as well so there it is something you will find on sale all over Portugal it is their famous Porto wine so this is made in Portugal it tastes delicious there are different varieties of Porto wine I must admit I don't drink alcohol very often but can I just say this is rather nice I did enjoy drinking it in fact I, I liked it so much I brought a little bit back <laughs> I'm just waiting for people to start complaining mr. Duncan you're a teacher you shouldn't be encouraging people to drink alcohol well I'm not encouraging you to do it to be honest you don't have to do it you don't have to but it is nice now and again to treat yourself to something nice don't you think you might call this one of my little guilty pleasures so that's it that's what I'm going to say I'm going to say it is one of my guilty pleasures it is my my little glass of wine at night <laughs> don't forget to drink responsibly that's what we say here on television whenever we advertise alcohol on television we always say drink responsibly which I think is pretty good advice to be honest hello to Amri Beatrice Palmyra also we have Anna hello Anna nice to see you here today as you can see the weather is quite nice here in the UK it's not too bad Pedro is here hello Pedro Pedro Belmont also Lilia hi there mr. Duncan I'm on my way to Denmark so I was just dropping by to say hello and I wish you a wonderful stream thank you Lilia and I hope you 
have a good time on your holiday, on your break to Denmark. Hi, dear teacher. What a beautiful country, Portugal. Oh, yes, I agree. Up until last week, I had never been to Portugal ever in my life, but now I have. Happy weekend, everyone. Thank you, Amory. Also, Massimo is here. Hi, Massimo. Welcome to my beautiful garden. Yes, it's looking rather nice. Mr. Steve was in the garden this morning. He was cutting the grass. He was making sure all the grass was short and neat, especially for today's live stream. Isn't that nice? Also, we have Miguel. Hello, Miguel. Civil engineering. Hello to you. I'm very intrigued by your name. What type of civil engineering do you do? And a big hello to Egypt. Asmat is here. Hello, Asmat. Nice to see you here as well on the live chat. Quite a lot of people are with me today. Isn't that lovely? Also, we have Asmat. Hello to you in Pakistan. Hello, Mr. Duncan. I'm in Leeds at the moment in the UK. Hello, Hamad. Nice to see you here. How is the weather in Leeds? Now, I believe today the weather in the north of England is a little unstable. I believe there is some rain forecast for the north of England today. Hopefully it won't rain here. I really hope it won't. Hello to all. Oh, hello also to do you know that? <laughs> do I know what? What a wonderful day. Thank you, Chris. Also, Pete Pitage is here again. Oh, hello. I believe you were here yesterday as well. Also to Mr. Steve's boss is here again. Hello to you, <laughs> Alessandro. Oh, I haven't seen you for a while. Hello, Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve. I'm anxious to listen to you every time I improve my comprehension. I always send a huge hug to you. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much, Alessandro. Nice to see you here again. I like the pink colour of the rose. Very nice. Thank you, Chris. Yes. There are many roses in the garden at the moment. At this time of year, you will see lots of roses growing in people's gardens. And there you can see one that I cut this morning. Don't worry, there are plenty of others in the garden. So I haven't destroyed them. I've only taken one. Coming up later on, we're talking about idioms, phrases and general expressions to do with insects. Yes, really. And the reason why I'm doing that today is because at the moment in the house, I am being tortured by flies. I don't know if you are like me, but I hate flies so much. They buzz around, they land on your face, they land on your arm, they land on your food. So house flies, very disgusting things especially round here because we live near some farmland where there is cattle and as you probably know cattle quite often go for big poops so the flies will land on the poop they will sometimes eat the poop can you believe it and then they will fly into your house and land on your food so as you can probably imagine i'm not very keen on having a poopy housefly landing on my dinner. So I'm not a big fan of flies, but I thought, hmm, it gave me some inspiration to talk about expressions, idioms, words to do with insects. Hello, Mr. Duncan. Could you tell me which is the right thing to say? Take off your shoes or take your shoes off? You can say either to be honest. One is active, one is passive. So you can say, take off your shoes or take your shoes off. Both are okay. Could you please take off your shoes? Could you please take off your shoes? 
Could you please take your shoes off before you come into the house? Don't forget to take off your shoes before you come in. Don't forget to take your shoes off before you come in. Guadalupe. Hello, Guadalupe. Good morning to everybody from Mexico. And a big hello to you as well. Hi to Mexico. I know I have quite a few viewers watching in Mexico. Hello to Massimo Withered. <laughs> That's a great word. If something is withered, it means it is old, it is dry, it is something that is no longer alive. We can say that something is dry, it is withered. So a flower, when it dies, will wither, wither. You might say that a person, when they get old, they also wither. Hello, Mr. Duncan. It's night time in Indonesia. Hello to Indonesia. I know that there has been quite a few things taking place there in Indonesia. Political things with... I think there was a disagreement on the recent election that took place there not very long ago. Hello to Najuin Hu. Also Vadim. Hello Vadim. Alangia and Olga. Hello Olga. Nice to see you here today as well. Wow. Where is your bottle of water? I don't have a bottle of water but I do have a glass of water and already <laughs> already there are flies in my water flies are a big pain in the neck they really are so yes I have my glass of water even though there are lots of flies swimming around inside it at the moment mmm I wonder if you can die from swallowing a fly. I will give it a try. Yes, I bought some wine as well. Hello to Belarusia. Hello, Belarusia. Nice to see you here today. Yes, I am back. I was here yesterday. It felt very strange doing a live stream on Saturday, but I was here yesterday. I did a short 45 minute live stream in the garden and then I went for a lovely meal in town. <gasps> oh yes, a beautiful meal and we did enjoy it. Hello Mr Duncan, what a lovely Sunday to hear the pure English once more from the heart of England. I suppose I am in the heart of England, in the middle of England, so yes. We are quite far away from the sea, so I suppose you could say that we are in the heart of England. Hi Mr Duncan, I am from Kurdistan, Nazar. Hello to Nazar, nice to see you here today on the live stream. Lulu, hello Lulu, nice to see you here as well, watching in Germany at the moment. Great, nice to see you here. That is nice to have your company today your glasses are new aren't they these glasses are not new these are my reading glasses I don't normally wear these but because I'm doing the live stream and I'm looking at my smartphone so I can read the live chat I am wearing my reading glasses it feels much better but no, I, I've actually had these glasses for, for over two years. How do you like to hear the Portuguese language? Is it good in your ears? Well, the strange thing about Portuguese, or when people are speaking Portuguese, sounds very similar to, has a very Spanish feel to it. Many words in Portugal, certainly on the signs look very similar to English words so quite often it was very easy to understand the road signs and the signs that were just in 
the local language. They weren't in English. So yes, quite often it was very easy to understand certain words. Mr Duncan, your temperature seems gentle. Yes, we have a much cooler day here today. Much cooler. Mr Duncan, I brought a pocket money with that hands from Portugal. I don't know what that means there. A pocket money. Pocket money. Do you mean pocket money? Can you spell it? Can I spell what? I'm not sure what you want me to spell there. Hi Lulu. In what part of Germany are you at the moment? You are French, I mean. Thank you, Helena. Helena sending a message to Lulu. Palmyra. Hello, Palmyra. I think Portugal was cheaper than the UK. Well, can I just say one thing? Most of the places where we ate, so when we went for our meals, quite a few of the places were quite very expensive to be honest so I would say that certainly the area we were in the area around Sintra was quite expensive we went to another place that was by the sea and we went to a lovely seafood restaurant and once again it was very expensive so we were quite surprised to find out how expensive it can be to eat in Portugal. I live in Sheffield. Anissa. Hello, Anissa. I live in Sheffield and I would like to improve my English language with you, especially speaking and listening. Well, that is the reason why I'm here today, to help you understand English. Maybe you will learn some new words or perhaps I will just help you to improve your listening it is English in your ear on a Sunday afternoon mr. Duncan you look great thank you Caesar that's very kind of you to say I feel quite relaxed to be honest because I've been away on holiday and you know what it's like when you when you have a holiday well I can't think of a better way to relax to be honest it is a good way to relax taking a holiday hello the beautiful weather in much Wenlock it looks very nice yes thank you TS we are having some rather nice weather fortunately it isn't as hot as yesterday yesterday was so hot I can't begin to tell you how hot it was you have a very nice view in your garden thank you once again thank you Massimo yes I think the view is quite nice you can see a very long way into the distance in my garden so yes I, I, I always feel very lucky that we have such a nice view here hello from Egypt hello to Mohammed Hussein who is watching and also we have Iraq watching as well Nazar is in Iraq nice to see you here today Mr. Duncan I'm from Malaysia you look great on the live stream and the weather looks nice in Portugal well today I'm not in Portugal last Sunday I was in Portugal but today I'm back in England <laughs> but I was there last week I was in Portugal last week this time last week I was talking to you from the hotel in Portugal Francesca says my daughter is going to Loughborough oh I see do you mean Loughborough University I've heard that Loughborough University is actually quite good quite a good university I'd like some rain here as well because in our area there is a drought warning so I think where Catherine is where Catherine is living at the moment there is a water shortage there is a drought so there is a shortage of water you know Mr Duncan the icon which stands up for me is the Barcelos rooster 
Oh, I see. So Louis likes the rooster. And there it is. And this is a small souvenir that I bought from Portugal. And you can see there, isn't that lovely? A little, a little rooster. Cock a doo doo. A little bit later, we'll be talking about words, expressions to do with certain insects, because during the summer months, we get lots of insects here in the UK. Mr. Duncan, is Mr. Steve joining you today? No, he isn't. He's not. He's a busy man these days. He has lots of other things to do. Mr. Duncan, you are a wonderful teacher. Much respect. Thank you, Usman. For that it's very kind of you to say and don't forget to tell your friends about my live streams as well if they are learning English if they want to improve their English then this is a good place to come every Sunday so whilst you are relaxing on a Sunday you can relax with me and learn some English why don't you take off your t-shirt mr duncan it's so hot i don't think i'll be doing that please be careful what you're saying i don't think i'll be taking my t-shirt off somehow i don't think anyone wants to see my bare body i don't think so your rose is beautiful here it is again my lovely rose isn't that nice a rose is still a rose by any other name thank you very much to Anna Antonia Davidson hello Davidson Felix says it's good to be here today hello mr. Duncan my name is Vitya and I'm trying to learn English every day I'm from the Ukraine we often say the Ukraine. I know that some people don't like that, but normally when we say maybe uh, the, the Yemen as well is another one. So we often say the Yemen, the Ukraine, the Netherlands. It just sounds better. I don't know why. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Duncan from Jamelia. I am watching from Ukraine says Vitya I hope you are okay I don't often watch your video lessons but what you recommend what do you recommend to improve your understanding of English well my advice is always the same treat English as a part of your life treat English as something that is a part of you so English is almost like a part of your body Practice English every day. Never give up, even when things seem too difficult. A lot of people give up. They don't try very hard and they just give up. I caught this beetle in my veranda this morning. Oh, you caught a beetle. There are lots of beetles around, especially at this time of year. There is an old superstition here in the UK that if you step on a beetle, if you kill a beetle, it will start to rain. <laughs> Did you know that? It is one of many superstitions that we have here in the UK. Ricardo says, I hate flies as well. I really hate flies as well. I really don't like flies at all. Unfortunately, during the summertime, flies are inevitable. They are, I think so. The warm weather brings the flies out. It does. Guadalupe says, I went to a Buddhist temple last week. Really? Whereabouts was that? Whereabouts was the Buddhist temple? I've lost it now. I've lost the message. I went to a Buddhist temple last week and I took my shoes off before entering. Yes, you will find this quite often with places of worship. Before you go inside, 
quite often you will have to remove your shoes, your footwear. Also, in some places you have to take your, your hat off and maybe other things as well. Maybe sometimes you have to wash before you go in to a place of worship. So there are many different things that have to be observed. I saw a lot of news about the meeting between Theresa May and Putin. Theresa May didn't smile. I heard people from your country always smile. I think... Oh, I see. Thank you very much for that. You almost got blocked for that. You almost got blocked. You only get one more chance. Belarusia. Yes, the British do, do smile. The British smile all the time. Like this. And this. And this. And this. Flies are very bad, but mosquitoes are a nightmare. I agree with you. I hate mosquitoes so much. They buzz around you at night when you are trying to get to sleep. And, of course, they bite you as well. They suck the blood from your body. And they can also spread some horrible diseases as well. Joan is here. Hello, Joan from Catalonia. I love your background. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm in the garden today. I was in the garden yesterday and I'm in the garden once more because I thought it would be nice to come outside. So that's why I'm out here today, whilst the weather is still nice. Catherine says, I don't like flies, but above all, I hate mosquitoes. It would appear that mosquitoes are very unpopular insects. I think so. <laughs> I also, oh, Chris says, I hate snakes. We don't get snakes here. Well, not dangerous ones anyway. So Chris says, I hate snakes because when I was a kid, I got a nasty surprise when I opened the pantry cupboard and there was a snake sleeping inside. Pantry. That's a great expression. That's a great word. Now, we used to use that word here many years ago. So pantry is a place where you keep your food. So it's normally a cupboard or sometimes a room it can also be a pantry. So the place where you keep your food is called a pantry. Pantry. TS says, thank you, sir. It is all political parties agree with the result at the end of our recent election in Indonesia. Yes, I saw it on the news. So I'm glad to hear that everyone is now getting along with each other they are once more friends <laughs> six gi hello hello teacher and hello to you as well massimo when i was a child i used to catch flies in a transparent bag massimo i want to know why why did you catch flies in a plastic bag I really want to know that. Did you get an autograph from Cristiano Ronaldo? No, I didn't. Although we had a very nice dance together. He's a very good dancer. But to be honest with you, I think I am a much better dancer than Ronaldo. I think so. Saturino, Mr. Duncan, mix a water bottle and a quarter of anisette glass and put them in the fridge. It is very Quen quenching. I like that word. If something quenches, it means it relieves. It takes a certain feeling away. Especially when we talk about being thirsty. So if you are feeling thirsty and you need a drink, you can drink some water and it will quench your thirst. It will take your thirst away. Hello from Congo. Oh, hello, Congo. It might be the first time I've ever had anyone 
talking to me on the live stream from Congo. Patrick, Patrick, kiss, kiss a car, kiss a car. I really like your voice, says Bui Van Kwong. Thank you very much. Where are you watching? I have a feeling you are in Vietnam. Who is the first English teacher on YouTube? I was the first ever English teacher to teach English as an Englishman on YouTube. Did you know that? It's true. Many, many years ago, 13 years ago, I started making my video lessons and teaching English on YouTube. So yes, and I was the first English Englishman to do it. It's true. Hello, Mr. Duncan. Have you noticed that there is an insect crawling on your shirt? Probably. Uh, I guess there are many insects crawling over me right now. Mr. Duncan, really, you are a good teacher. Thank you. Thank you, Cab Cabdirashid. Thank you very much for that. I like your hat. It looks very fresh on you. Thanks a lot. I love my hat. It is protecting my eyes from the sunlight today. Are you going to make a video with what you filmed in Portugal? Yes, I have a lot of video, a lot of video clips to look at. So I hope maybe next week I will have something for you. Also next week, there will be a new full English lesson next week as well. I am so busy at the moment. I really feel as if I need another holiday. Sorry, but I have a new movie, mobile phone. And he writes what he wants. Oh, I see. So you have a new mobile phone, Beatrice. I'm quite surprised that you actually read my live chat. Thank you, sir. You are actually in England. Yes, I'm in England at the moment. Thank you, Mohammed Hil Hilmi Hussein, for that. You are welcome. I, I always try to say hello to everyone. So if I don't say hello to you, it doesn't mean I'm ignoring you. Sometimes I just miss your name from the list because it moves very fast. Nice batting. Oh, I think I think that might have something to do with the cricket. My daughter is going to college to learn English for 15 days, says Francesca. So is that is that in Loughborough? Wow, that sounds very interesting. I'm intrigued. Please let me know how your daughter gets on. Thank you very much for that. Mr. Steve is busy because he's found a hot girl. No, he hasn't found a hot girl. I am going to block you in a minute. Calm down. Calm down. Keep it nice. Mr. Duncan, you were in the posh restaurants. I think so because 90% of Portuguese people can't go to those restaurants. Or the Penalonga Resort. I agree. Well, to be honest with you, we wouldn't normally stay at such a posh place but because mr steve's company was paying for it then we could <laughs> we are we are not millionaires just to let you know yen yen is watching in vietnam hello to you thank you for joining me today so let's have a look at something shall we We've had a look at my souvenirs from Portugal. Now we are going to take a look at something else. After returning from my holiday, we found something quite upsetting in the garage. We found a little animal that had been trapped in the garage whilst we were away on holiday. I know it's terrible we didn't see it in the garage before we left so it must have been hiding in a corner but 
it was still in there when we returned and it wasn't very well can you guess what the animal was now we did rescue it and we took it to a wildlife hospital which is very close to where we live isn't that convenient so we found a little animal that was feeling very unwell in our garage and we managed to rescue it and we took it to an animal hospital which is not very far away from where we live and the animal in question can you guess what it was what was the tiny animal that we found in our garage what was it does anyone know does anyone know does anyone know what was the small animal that we found in our garage the other night does anyone know palmyra says is it a fox no it wasn't a fox <gasps> but if it if it had been a fox i would have been very surprised and excited at the same time so no palmyra says is it a fox chris asks is it a fox it is not a fox it was not a fox there was an animal that we found in our garage it was trapped inside was it a rabbit no it wasn't a rabbit sarge says was it a mouse now there is a mouse living in the house in the wood store so the place where we store the wood there is actually a small ma mouse living in there so yes there is a mouse living in the house but it wasn't a mouse that was trapped in the garage was it a cat <laughs> As you know, I'm not a fan of cats because they they are so cruel to birds. TS says swallow. Was it a swallow? A type of bird? No, it wasn't. It wasn't a bird. It wasn't a rabbit. It wasn't a cat. <laughs> Is it a Was it a possum? A possum. I don't think we have possums here in the UK was it a dog thank you Nandish it wasn't a dog I think the neighbors would have heard if it was a dog because dogs tend to bark was it a ferret in your garage no it wasn't what about a raccoon we don't get raccoons here in the UK <laughs> sorry a, a, a fly is biting my bottom excuse me no, it wasn't a, f a ferret. It wasn't a raccoon. We don't get raccoons here in the UK. And it wasn't a squirrel. It wasn't a puppy. It. It was it a cub. It wasn't a baby animal. Oh, I see. I, someone has got it right. Oh, very good. That's very nice was it a crocodile no it wasn't a crocodile <laughs> fortunately you will be pleased to hear that we don't get crocodiles here in the uk was it a, a small deer no it wasn't was it a, a baby bear was it a squirrel no it definitely wasn't a squirrel quite a few people have got it right I will now show you what the animal was it wasn't a bee it wasn't a beehive here is the answer when we came back from our holiday during the week we found a little animal in the garage looking very unwell very weak and the animal was Ding! well done to those who got it right yes it was a hedgehog there was a baby hedgehog in the garage and it wasn't looking very well it was looking really unwell it, it, it was weak and tired so it had been in the garage for six days trapped inside so I think it wasn't feeling too well fortunately 
near to where we live there is an animal hospital so we took our little hedgehog friend to the hospital and at the moment our little hedgehog is getting lots of care and attention so it's very good that there is an animal hospital very close to where we live and it is it is all funded by by charity so yes quite a few people got it right yes it was it was a hedgehog so well done to all those who got it right <laughs> as far as I know the hedgehog is now okay it had a little needle put in its arm uh, and fluids were then put into its body so it would be hydrated again as you probably know if you if you go without water for many days you will become dehydrated dehydrated I love hedgehogs they they are so lovely the only problem is they, they have fleas in their spines so if you ever pick a hedgehog up you will see there will be fleas walking around between its spines but yes I love I love them very much I do love hedgehogs as well do you know whether it was saved in the hospital yes it is doing well it has recovered from its little drama inside the garage did you pay to treat the animal no it was free so everything that they do is done for free but they they rely on donations the hedgehog is so cute and it eats lots of insects that is one of the reasons why I love hedgehogs because they eat insects sometimes insects can be a real pain in the neck talking of which oh very very slick talking of which we are now going to take a look at some words and expressions to do with insects and if you have any of your own feel free to join in you can offer your suggestions as well so words and expressions and general words connected to insects insects and at this time of year there are insects everywhere there are so here's the first word that I'm going to show you and this word is bug bug now I think it's fair to mention that the word bug is another way of saying insect so bug is insect an insect can be described as a bug bug so in American English people will often say bug here in British English we will say insect insect but also we might say bug as well so we might also use the word bug to describe an insect however there are other ways of using the word bug as well for example you can annoy someone you can be annoying you can really make someone feel angry because you are annoying them we can say that you bug them bug them you really annoy them so something that is annoying something that is getting on your nerves something that is really irritating can bug you you are being bugged by something so bug can mean annoy irritate bug another way of using bug is to listen to someone using an electronic device so if you listen to someone if you eavesdrop on a conversation by using a hidden microphone we can say that you bug someone you listen in to their conversations by using an electronic device 
so there it is an interesting word bug in American English they will often say bug instead of insect in British English we quite often use both so I hope that helps you Mika says I love a movie called a bug's life oh yes I remember that that was many years ago that was in the very early days of Pixar your computer graphics are great oh thank you Massimo for that I'm not in my studio today so you won't see many computer effects you won't see many graphics today on my lesson another word we are talking about words and expressions connected with or connected to insects here's another one now I'm sure you can come up with at least one expression to do with this particular insect here is an insect you will see quite a lot at this time of year in the UK yes it is our friend the bee buzzing around bee and we get lots of bees here and of course bees are very good for the environment they produce delicious honey which is something I really do like to be honest I do like eating honey in fact I like eating anything that's sweet to be honest hello everyone I am very late today hello Connell you are a little late today but it's okay as I always say better late than never better late than never Catherine for the passage of the year 2000 there were lots of stories about computer bugs ah yes that's another use of the word bug yes so we can also use this word to describe a virus virus something that affects other things by creeping in or sneaking in without you being aware so a bug can also be a disease or an illness something that you catch so maybe physically you can catch a bug a disease an illness a virus and of course in computing you can also say bug to mean something that has infected your computer you have a bug in your computer it is causing your computer to malfunction to go wrong to not work properly <laughs> so B oh where is it <laughs> come back there we go B a little B can be very busy there is an expression that we often use we can describe a person as a very busy be busy be buzzing around a person who is always busy always doing things we can describe them as a busy bee a busy bee buzzing around every day and that's what it is a bee so we are talking about words and expressions idioms connected to insects what about you are you a busy bee I know I am especially today I like honey very much me too I love honey on toast I like honey on my cereal in the morning oh and can I say last week we stayed at a lovely hotel and they had the most delicious pancakes that they made fresh for breakfast and I, I must admit I became a little bit addicted to the pancakes last week so I used to have these little pancakes I had them last week and I used to put lots of butter on and then I would put lots of honey on top as well <gasps> wow I really miss those pancakes so much I do honestly 
<sighs> yes bees are very important at the moment here in the UK bees are suffering a decline there are not as many bees around as there used to be so yes it's a shame at the moment bees their numbers are slowly dropping which isn't very nice really here we go another word another word that we can use to describe an insect but also we can use it in everyday life are you ready oh <laughs> i've done it again there it is oh mr duncan we don't like that we don't like that very much that is a horrible insect slimy slippery Ugh. slug slug you will often find slugs in your garden especially at night the slugs like to come out when it's dark so if you look around your garden at night especially here in the UK you will often find a slug slithering around your garden slug we can also use the word slug to describe hitting someone you slug someone you slug them you strike them you slug them we can also describe the fragments of a bullet that is found maybe embedded in a wall or inside a person so the remnants of a bullet can also be described as a slug so the bullet itself after it is fired it will go into something like a hard surface or maybe into another person and that is called a slug or bullet slug we get lots of slugs in the garden and to be honest with you they can be a real pain in the neck because what they do they eat a lot of the plants in the garden so slugs can be rather annoying because they tend to eat your plants so a lot of people don't like slugs gardeners gardeners hate slugs so much Louis is here they are part of the snail family yes they are they are kind of connected so I always think that slugs when you see a slug it looks like a snail that has no shell the slugs munch on my plants in the garden the little beep bleep <laughs> Bobby thank you it's nice to see you back here again I believe you are watching in the UK you were with us yesterday you were talking about the temperature inside your car so I hope you are feeling a lot cooler today it is very windy however the Sun is out right now so thank you Bobby yes slugs they are very annoying insects especially if you are trying to grow flowers and plants in your garden Ugh. the gardeners hate them so much hokey tan says i remember my english teacher showed me mr duncan's videos many years ago today i just come across your video on youtube it is kind of nostalgic thank you hockey tam hockey tan it's very kind of you to say so yes I've been doing this for 13 years can you believe it I've been doing my live streams for three years and my recorded lessons I've been doing for over well nearly 13 years in fact on the 31st of October this year it will be my 13th anniversary on YouTube on the 31st of October which just happens to be the day when Brexit 2.0 will happen or maybe not Mr Duncan you're becoming popular in your own country isn't it amazing thank you Valentin I welcome everyone 
I don't care where you are, if you are in England or Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Greece, Vietnam, India, Pakistan, China, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Portugal. I can't forget Portugal, can I? Also, all the other countries as well around the world. There are so many. Egypt, Iraq, Israel. A lot of people in the Middle East watching my live streams as well. Because I speak English slowly, it is easy to listen. Do you mean because I speak English slowly? Well, my English is moderate. Moderate speed. But also my English is very clear because I'm an English teacher. If my English wasn't clear, then you wouldn't understand what I was saying. And it would be very difficult to teach you, to be honest. Hello, Cambodia. Oh, Cambodia. Did I miss you off the list? <laughs> I was saying hello to lots of countries just. Cambodia. Yes, hello to Cambodia. Nice to see you here as well. So slug. We just had the word slug. We are talking about words that describe insects. But also, they can be used in other ways as well. Here's another one. Now, you might not realise that the insect I'm about to show you has lots of expressions as well. Can you see it? It is an ant. Ant ant when I was a teenager I was a very big fan of a group called Adam and the ants and I used to dress up like Adam ant I used to wear lots of makeup on my face and dress just like him <sighs> so ant an ant is a small creature a very small insect but they are quite strong insects they can carry more than double their body weight so they are very strong insects even though they are quite small ants so an ant well there are some expressions you can use connected with this particular creature ant if you are a person who can't sit still if you are a person who has to do something and move around all the time we can say that you have ants in your pants <laughs> I love that expression. So a person who doesn't keep still, a person who is always active, a person who can't relax. They are always moving. They are always doing things. We can say that that person has ants in their pants. Ant. Another word, another expression that you can use is antsy. Antsy. A person who is antsy is restless. They, they can't sit still. They can't stay still. So very similar to the previous expression. A person who is antsy. Antsy. They cannot relax. They are unable to sit still. They are very antsy. I suppose the reason why is because ants are always doing something. Ants are always moving around so I think that's a pretty good expression ants this is live English and I will be going in around about 10 minutes I am live in my garden in England and I hope you are doing well today Hussein says hello Mr Duncan I owe you so much in learning English oh thank you very much I'm very pleased to hear that my lessons have helped you Massimo yes the word is antsy antsy a person who cannot sit still <laughs> Helena Mr Duncan you give us so much you are a good and you are good and faithful company thanks for that Thank you very much. Isn't that lovely? I love receiving your messages. 
It always puts a big smile on my face whenever I read your lovely comments. Here's another one now. Oh dear. Another word to describe an insect. But also we can use this in English to describe a certain action. A certain action. Have you ever heard of an expression that uses this? Well, there are a couple of expressions. First of all, we can say that the early bird catches the worm. The early bird catches the worm. So if you get up very early, if you prepare, if you start doing something before other people, you will get the best opportunity. The early bird catches the worm. Also, we can use this to describe a person who tries to get into another person's life. If you try to get into a person's personal affairs or business, you interfere. You worm your way in. You worm your way in. So in this particular expression, we are using the word worm as a verb. So to worm your way in. You worm your way into someone's life. You worm your way in. You do things that get you closer to another person. You worm your way in. There's no point trying to worm your way into my life. I've told you already, I don't like you. <laughs> Catherine says, oh, that's a very good one. Of course, a person who enjoys reading books, a person who likes reading, we can describe them as a bookworm, bookworm. So a person who enjoys reading books, a person who likes reading all the time, we can describe them as a bookworm. I like it. Well done. Thank you very much for that. Mr. Duncan, when is your next trip? Thank you, Massimo. I don't know. We haven't really planned anything else. So we've had our two holidays. We went to Paris earlier this year and last week we were in Portugal. <clears throat> but at the moment we have nothing else planned. Nothing else at the moment. <clears throat> Apparently in Mexico, we don't say bookworm, we say book mouse. So a person who likes reading a lot in Mexico is described as a book mouse. OK, that's interesting. I didn't know that, but now I do. We will be going in around five minutes. Five minutes left I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream and if you missed yesterday you can also watch yesterday's live stream again as well here is another insect that we can use in everyday life and here is the one that has been causing me so much discomfort and annoyance over the past couple of days. I'm sure you can guess what it is. I don't like this insect. I don't like it at all. It is very annoying. Fly. There are many different types of fly. You can have a house fly. There is also horse fly and blue bottle. A blue bottle is a type of fly. And there you can see our very annoying friend, the house fly. There is a fly. Fly can be used in many ways. You can fly from one place to another. It means to move around very quickly. So I was in such a hurry today I was flying around the kitchen trying to get ready for work so if you fly it means you rush around I was flying from here 
to there so it doesn't mean you are actually going up in an aeroplane it just means you are moving around and doing lots of things in a short period of time you fly around Alice Alice Sar Ali says I enjoyed listening to your lesson today you gave me some new words with explanations thank you very much you are welcome you are very very welcome that's why I'm here so fly fly to move around quickly just like a fly because a fly often buzzes around what about you do you like flies they are quite annoying how do you keep the flies out of your house what do you do, do have you ever killed a fly <coughs> have you ever <coughs> squashed a fly have you ever <coughs> swatted a fly so if you use something to hit a fly we say that you swat you swat a fly yes we can also say fly on the wall which means to secretly watch what someone is doing or what they are up to so you can be a fly on the wall we often use it these days on television you will often see a fly on the wall documentary so this is something that is close up it is a kind of reality so when we talk about reality TV when we say reality TV we often mean fly on the wall fly on the wall so imagine that you are a little fly on the wall watching what is going on in the room fly on the wall some people wish they were a fly on the wall because they want to listen to a conversation that is taking place between two people I wish I was a fly on the wall during their argument last night I do not like flies at all sometimes I kick them kick them I don't know how you kick a fly I think that sounds very difficult that doesn't sound like an easy thing to do the last one before we go and then we are out of here snail snail we mentioned the slug earlier and now we have an animal that looks very similar to a slug except it has a shell snail snail we can often say that a person who doesn't move around very quickly a person who is very slow we can describe them as a snail oh you're just like a snail oh you walk so slowly you you walk as slow as a snail you walk like a snail it means you are walking very slowly too slowly come on hurry up stop being such a snail you move at a snail's pace so if you move very slowly we can say that you move at a snail's pace so pace is the regularity of your steps snail's pace you move very slowly you move at a snail's pace you move slowly and that is it oh my goodness we have already come to the end of today's live stream I will say a few hellos and then we will go oh I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream and of course you can watch it later so the whole thing will be available later on for you to watch all over again isn't that nice I will be going in the house to have a cup of tea and I will try to find Mr. Steve. I wonder where Mr. Steve has gone to. Where is he at the moment? He is somewhere around. Yes, some people eat snails in certain cultures. People will eat snails. A particular type of snail that is grown especially for people to eat. Catherine says I'm French and I don't eat snails I'm not keen on their texture 
I don't know how to describe it thank you Catherine I've never eaten a snail I don't think I want to but I imagine that that they must be very chewy so when you chew something I think eating a snail must be very chewy it must be like eating eating rubber <laughs> I think so we are having tea cakes yes we will be having tea cakes and a cup of tea and later on we are having some salmon for supper so yes we are doing all of those things today as usual thank you to Salvino thank you also Mr Bruno thank you to Belarusia I hope your mum is feeling okay as well please send her all my best wishes please that's it it's time to go thank you very much for your lovely messages thank you Valentine <laughs> yes you must cook your snails before you eat them or else it can be very risky yes I would imagine if you eat snails raw without cooking them yes I think I think I don't I don't recommend that at all no don't do that please I'm going now thanks Louis thanks Helena thanks Mika thank you very much for your company today from the birthplace of the English language this is Mr Duncan that's me by the way saying thanks for watching and I hope you have a great rest of the weekend for those who still have their Sunday to enjoy and of course until the next time we meet we might meet on Wednesday with my new full English lesson or of course next Sunday 2 p.m. UK time and of course until the next time we meet ta-ta for now